100 years of cooperative extension services by USDA at historically black colleges and universities known as 1890s. Why did the government designate funding for 1890 land-grant institutions? Well, 28 years after the passage of the Morrill Act in 1862, Congress enacted a second Morrill Act establishing black land-grant universities. The legislation gave the states funds to establish state universities for persons of color if race was an admissions factor at the existing state university. Commonly referred to as 1890 universities, these institutions have a track record of serving the underserved and reaching the unreached. Extension is about farmers and family, and we will be making, strengthening that connection between farmers, families, and communities. Extension is taking the information from the college or university directly out into the community to the farm person or the people in the rural area who will actually put this information into practice. Extension was established at Fort Valley State University October the 16th, 1972. And this is when then I became the first administrator of the Fort Valley State Cooperative Extension Board. In fact, I give myself credit and some others do that, that I'm the father of the program here at Fort Valley State. Fort Valley State University being an 1890 land-grant institution has a historic mission of uh, assisting small, underrepresented, limited resource farmers. Uh, Fort Valley State University Extension specialists and county agents have done an outstanding job over the years uh, reaching out to these farmers and arming them with the knowledge and skills needed to succeed in their agriculture enterprise. So when you look at Extension, you think in terms of an educational network an educational network of opportunities to help people change their lives for the better. This program was designed to do a couple of things. One, it was designed to reach young people and get them interested in agriculture. Hopefully to be a feeder school for the Fort Valley State University as well as any other land grant school that they may choose. We came in brand new to the program, brand new to the state, which meant that we had to develop a program that would address the needs of the clientele whom we were to serve. Our program delivery method was through county extension agents and also program assistants who were indigenous to the area. They were people who knew what the situations were in the counties and could help us to not only research those problems, but to address the needs of the people in those areas. My role as a county extension agent is to carry out the cooperative extension programs in the area of agriculture and natural resources. Meaning that um, as an agent, I assist uh, rural clients or underserved um, with their farming, practical farming methods and techniques in the area of agriculture to help them improve their existing farming operation and help them launch a new operations. So when we look at the programs in Corporate Extension, we're looking at outreach, we're looking at marketing opportunities, and basically we're looking at just providing helpful educational opportunities for the citizens of Georgia. This program was designed to bridge a gap where city people who didn't know a lot about uh, gardening and farming and, and nutritious food, they now could see uh, and get some training on a small scale how they could be able to grow uh, not only uh, in a, a block of land, but they could also grow in containers. And today you see a uh, raised bed gardens. That was the beginning of raised bed gardens. Reminded of the um Ham and Egg program that goes back uh, many, many years uh, was an effort among extension agents to bring about uh, improvement and uh, 
livestock and livestock productivity. We basically have uh, four different uh, program areas. We have agriculture and natural resources. We have uh, family and consumer sciences. We have rural development and we have a 4 youth development. With the food and nutrition uh, program, we have the expanded food and nutrition program as well. And this program uh, helps families uh, feed their children healthier meals and to budget wisely. Major impact has been to really the mere fact of having access to information. Uh, that was the shortest. In other words, I do not because I know not. This is a place where we were able to take information to people who were not receiving information and take the information directly to them so that they might have an opportunity to put it into practice and into that life. I think the greatest role we're going to play at Fort Valley State is going to be a global economy. There is no question in my mind that we have a great opportunity. For the next 100 years, basically, it, 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 it has started now. Uh, in the present. With our university uh, role as it relates to sustaining farm operations, to enhancing farm operations, and definitely with the challenges that we are having with our youth, uh, we are, in my opinion, right in the mix, right in the, uh, right in the center of providing education opportunities, of providing training opportunities, such that we can improve the quality of life. It's been my privilege to represent Fort Valley State University and State Capitol for 32 years. And uh, I consider it my university. And I'm delighted and I'm pleased with everything I've seen. And I'm very proud to be a part of a Fort Valley State Capitol. Whether it's helping a farmer develop a workable business plan, instilling confidence and self esteem in a group of teens, or helping a family improve its resources. I expect that Fort Valley State University Extension Service will keep its motto alive and well into the next 100 years and beyond. For more information about the Fort Valley State University's Cooperative Extension Program, please call 478-825-6296 or log on to ag.fvsu.edu.